I want to thank God so much for, for what he has done for us and what he's going to do for us in year 2015. You know, when Jesus Christ made the statement that seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added, he laid the foundation for prosperity and for blessing. You know, there is no way we can circumvent that. You cannot go around it. The Lord said that if you want me to bless you, then seek my kingdom and my what? Righteousness with all your heart. You know, the Lord cannot bless you outside of that foundation. And he wants to bless us. 2015 holds blessings for you and I. But you and I have to seek his kingdom and his what? Righteousness with all of our hearts. Not half of it. Hello? Not half of it with all of our hearts. The blessings of God are conditioned on your willingness to yield your all to him. Jesus Christ said, I am the shepherd. You know, I am the good shepherd. He said, anyone who comes out, outside, who jumps the fence, who goes through the window, is not a true word, shepherd. You cannot get the blessings of God by going through the window. You have to come through the door. And at the entrance of the door stands a man whose name is called Jesus Christ. So I want to bring this message to all of us, that for us to enjoy the true blessings of God. Now, the true blessings of God, it, it makes us rich. Now, when we talk about riches, the very thing that comes into our mind, we are thinking about material things. But there is something far greater than material things. There is one thing that makes us rich that the world cannot buy. And that is the joy and the peace of the Lord. Hello? Amen. The joy and the peace of the Lord. That one, the world cannot buy. That one, when you and I leave this world, you leave this world with that. You leave this world with the joy of the Lord. You leave this world with the peace of the Lord. You leave this world with those things because those are the virtues of heaven. The material things will all stay behind. And what the Lord has had me to share with all of us is that 20, 000, 20, 2015 will be a year of perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now, what, why, why did the Lord give me this message? Because every passing year brings us closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says that without holiness, no man shall see God. So in this year 2015, we want to commit ourselves to perfecting the holiness of God by fearing God, by reverencing God. If you turn with me your Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 15, there is a message that Paul delivered to the Corinthian church. He said, I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanas, that it is the fruits, the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. There is something bad something about the word addiction. Now, when somebody is addicted to something, he sacrifices everything that he has for that thing. If you watch somebody who is addicted to drugs, he will sacrifice his everything for drugs. Even that which you used to buy bread, he will buy drugs with it. So you find people who are addicted to drug grow lean and lean and lean and you wonder what is going on. All because they are addicted to it. They let go of everything and prefer to spend it on that drug. If you watch somebody who is addicted to alcohol, 
He leaves everything, sacrifices everything for alcohol. Even to the extent that when they drink water, they, they even get drunk because they're so addicted to, to, to alcohol that water, I mean, it becomes like, you know, they're addicted to it. If you find somebody who's addicted to women, he will give his whole paycheck, he can give it to a woman just so that he can have what he wants to have. He would he have a wife and children, but he will give the money to somebody else just so. And he always goes lacking in his home. That word addiction is very strong. But I thank God for this family called the household of Stephanus. For them, they chose to be addicted to Jesus Christ. The household of Stephanus chose to be addicted to Jesus Christ. The purpose in their heart to perfect the holiness of God by fearing God. And in so doing, they addicted themselves to him. For them, they gave their all for the sake of what? Of Christ and him crucified. And the Lord wants you and I this 2015 to purpose in our hearts that we are going to sacrifice all for Christ and only Christ. Hallelujah. There is no nothing that you and I can lose. Amen? Amen? There is nothing that you and I can and will lose when we give all to Jesus. Amen. I thank him. You know, we are standing in 2015, 2014, but can you believe that Jesus Christ has already traveled through 2015? Yes. For your sake and for my sake, he has gone to seek out all the pitfalls, all the traps that the enemy has set. He's gone through 2015 up to December and walked back and is waiting for us in January. Yes. And he promises to carry every one of us who would yield our all to him. You will lose nothing. In fact, the, the things that you lose are the things that you don't need. Hello? The things that you and I will lose are the things that you and I don't want. Need. His blessings are conditioned on our total surrender and our total yieldedness to him. But that is the most difficult thing that we find doing. Why? Because the world is competing for your soul, competing for your attention, just like Christ. And one thing with Christ, he does not strive. He knows he is sovereign. He knows he is all that you and I need. And so he is not fighting for you to get your attention. He is only asking for you to choose the right way. The world forces you because, and it pitches all this kind of advertisement, everything to get your attention. So we find ourselves dividing our time between the world and Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ does not want half of you. He wants all of you. You know why Jesus Christ wants all of you and all of me? Because he gave his all for you and I. On the cross of Calvary, he didn't give half. He gave his all. When he said it is finished, it means he has given his what? His all. The Bible says in the book of Leviticus, the soul or the life of the spirit or the life of the soul is in the blood. Jesus gave his all, his blood. The Bible tells us how he was whipped. He was whipped. He was whipped so much that the prophet, when he was prophesying his death in the book of Isaiah chapter 52, he said his visage was so mad. The visage, the, 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 a look at him was such that there was no beauty in him to be beheld, you, 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 to be de de delighted in. They lashed him his whole back, the back of his head all the way down to the feet. And when there was no spot to hit, they turned him over and then whipped him all over. Flesh tearing from all his body. He who is God and who could, I mean, save himself from them, didn't do that. Why? Because he wanted to give his all for you and I. Oh, 
He's not asking you to go and be hung on the cross. All he's saying that, give me all your heart. Give me all your heart. Give me all your heart. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God means that giving your all to Jesus Christ. And when you and I begin to sing that song, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, let us have that in mind. Then I'm totally yielded to God. Then I guarantee you that next year by this time, you will stand here and testify that when you yielded all your life, everything to him, he gave you more than enough. The Lord doesn't want you and I to struggle. Let me read it again. He said, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruit of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have addicted. They are willing to give their all. They are willing to give up their food for the sake of Christ. They are willing to give up their homes for the sake of Christ. In fact, if you look the whole the, the hall of faith, the hall of faith, Hebrews chapter 11, everyone whose name was mentioned in there, it says they never received that thing that they were looking for. But they had that which we call faith, the evidence of things hoped for and the substance of things. Not see. They were slain. They were boiled in oil. What did they do to them? Some were dragged through the streets, all because they refused to renounce the name of Jesus Christ. For them, they have addicted themselves to Jesus Christ. Watch somebody who is addicted to cocaine. Don't try to get his cocaine from him. You'll be a dead man. He is so addicted to it. Hello? He is so what? Addicted to it. 2014, 2015, may you and I purpose in our hearts that we are going to be addicted to Jesus Christ. We are perfecting the holiness of God in the fear of God, so much so that we are going to let go of anything that is going to hamper my walk with God or your walk with God. Anything that will be what an obstacle, anything that will be a hindrance, you want to let go of it. Why? Because you want to perfect what? Holiness. Remember the book of Hebrews says, without what? Holiness. No man shall see God. In the word of God, when Jesus Christ spoke many times, he said, not all who say, Lord, Lord, shall enter into what? The kingdom of God. He said that day, many shall say, Lord, did we cast out demons in your name? And he will say, I never what? Knew you. So you see that it goes beyond the miracles and all the things that we fancy ourselves what? In. It has to do with holiness. <clears throat> And may we all, in the name of Jesus Christ, purpose in our hearts that will perfect holiness. And how do we perfect holiness? Second Corinthians, and I'll be closing on that chapter. In Second Corinthians, the same Second Corinthians, chapter seven. Second Corinthians, chapter seven. If you are there, say hello. Thank you for saying hello. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 7. Look at me telling you to tell me hello and I am not yet there. <coughs> Verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the word spirit. Hello? Having therefore these promises, 
What are the promises? The promises are aforementioned in chapter 6. When you go home, please let that be the first chapter you want to read for the year. But in chapter 6 from verse 14, he says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness, and what concord have Christ with Belial, or what path have he that believes with an infidel? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. Wow. You are the temple of the living God. Can you imagine? We are building huge edifices saying that that is a temple of God. God says that is not where I want to live. I want to live in your life in your heart. He has chosen your body and my body to be his temple. The God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who created you and I, he says, I choose not to live in these four walls. I want to live in you. He said, we are the, his what? His temple. That is the highest honor that can be conferred on anybody. Can you imagine Barack Obama saying, he's coming to live in your house? God is saying, I'm, I don't want to live in your house. I want to live in you. So that wherever you are going, I will go with you. Amen. So what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in, wow, and walk what? In them. So now you can understand why sometimes when you go to light down, you turn, you keep on turning, then it could be maybe the Lord walking in you. Hey, don't 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 go to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, I will dwell in them. And I will walk in them. And I will be their God. And they shall be my what? God wants to be your God and he wants you to be his what? People. That is the highest honor that anyone can ask. He wants you and I to be his people. So he said, wherefore, come out. Because of that, he wants you and I to purpose in our hearts to sanctify ourselves. So come out from any and everything that you know is not pleasing unto what? Unto him. I need not enumerate or itemize or list or any of those things you know and I know hello you and I know the things that you and I so cherish which are contrary to the will of what of God and the Lord is saying that wherefore come out from among them and be ye what separate Christian Christians believers we need to learn how to separate ourselves with that which, from that which is an abomination unto God. Hello? In 2015, you and I will do well if we want to perfect holiness in the fear of God. If you and I want to be recipients of God's true blessings, I had to qualify if that were true because there is not every blessing is a true word. Blessing. Some of them, a blessing, some of the blessings are bridges that the enemy builds so that he can have a line into your life. That is not blessing. I call that a mirage. It appears to be, but it is not. It carries with it a heavy price that so many of us end up paying. But the blessings of God are not like that. They are true, they are pure. And God wants you and I in 2015 to be beneficiaries, recipients of his true blessings. And that can only happen when we desire to perfect holiness by fearing him, by reverencing him, and choosing to addict ourselves to the things that pertain to him. The Lord wants you and I to do that. Anything short of that will not work. Anything short of that will be temporary. Anything short of that will be like a mirage. You've seen a mirage on a hot sunny day as you drive on the road alone. You see ahead of you something that shows as if there is a pool of water. And as you approach, the thing fizzes into thin air. And if you happen to be like me and you are very thirsty, you chance 
Stop pulling by the wayside and say, I'm going to get water to drink, only to find yourself watching a hot quota on the road. It's a mirage. God doesn't offer us mirage. Satan is the one who offers us what? Mirages. And there are so many mirages that we see. How many of us have heard the grass is not greener on the other side? That is the mirage that the enemy appears. He shows you something to look so glorious, only to later say, I wish I hadn't done this. The Lord wants you and I to enjoy his true blessings in year 2015. But we have to purpose in our hearts that we are going to seek to perfect holiness in the fear of God. Perfect holiness. Feed on the word of God. Hello? Amen. Feed on the word of God. Please, let's stop being babies. Let's grow up. Make time for the word of God. Start reading book by book. Start from Genesis. Read. The story sometimes may be boring. But don't let your carnal mind read it. Let your spirit mind do what? Feed on it. Because that is the one that benefits from the word. Go to Genesis. Go to Exodus. Matilda, how much do you want me to pay you to teach me how to really, you know? I just said, go to Genesis, Exodus. Now I've forgotten the rest. <laughs> We thank God for the children. They, 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 are, they are marvelous. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Touch not what? The unclean thing. God is saying, when you and I do that, then I will what? Receive you. Then I will do what? Receive you. God wants to God wants to receive us. Hello? God wants to do what? Receive us. I don't know how many of you have ever gone to visit somebody only to find the door being shut in your face. That's not a good feeling. Hello? Boop, 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 boop. Nobody. But you can hear some food. You know, you can hear children laughing and giggling, but nobody's opening the door. They are not being received. Hello? But our God said, when you and I come out from amongst them and touch no unclean thing, he will do what? Receive us. It's conditioned. Hello? It is what? A conditional thing. Now note that I'm not reading from the Old Testament. Am I? Am I? It's from where? The New Testament. And one thing that I want all of us to do is let's open the word of God together. Don't let me spoon feed anybody. Because in the end, fair analysis, you have to stand on your own. That's why I always want to enjoy our hearts to delight ourselves in studying the word of God. God. To perfect holiness in the fear of God, feed on the word of God. Make the word of God your food in 2000 and 2015, make the word of God your food. Make the, let the word of God be your coffee that you drink in the early morning. Mm -hmm. Let the word of God be your hot chocolate that you drink when it is cold. Let the word of God be your steak on that plate. Let the word of God be your fufu. Let the word of God be your jollof rice. All the things that you so delight, let the word of God be that. And when you do that, you see how much blessed you be. Hello? How much blessed you be. The joy of the Lord to fill you. You see people grimacing with faces, looking like the whole world is against them. But in you will be that fresh joy. That fresh joy. You hear that sweet music, the heavenly music, in your heart, in the dead of the night, when you, number five, see, I try to, hello, uh -huh. please, 
don't hide that five because that that's what's going to no no uh -huh, you see uh -huh. good 2015 hello <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. Ha! God wants to be your father in 2015. What does a father do? A true father. He takes care of his own. Hello? A true father will lay his life down for his children. God wants to be your father. Your true father provides for his children. God wants to provide your need. He wants to do what? Provide your need. You know what he did to us? He showed to us all nations this year that he's our father. Because he provided for us. He showed to us by providing for us. And he wants to do that for every one of us. Individually and collectively. He wants to do that for us. Beloved, we are 10 minutes away from the country called 2015. We are 10 minutes. God has been so faithful. He has been so good. He has been so good. He has been so gracious. I want to pause at this juncture and offer you the opportunity to just open up, open up yourself unto him. Communicate with him. He loves you. He's your father. Hello? He's your father. He's your God. He wants you to communicate with him. You don't need me to do that on your behalf. He wants to hear from you yourself. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to acknowledge everything that he has done for you. And he also wants you to recommit yourself and purpose in your heart that what you have heard today, you are going to and join yourself to it to do. And will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Therefore, with having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting what? Holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Shall we rise onto our feet? Hey, Father, so I need you. You are the one I desire. I desire. I desire your holiness. I desire your righteousness. I desire your purity. I desire you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I want to be addicted to you, Jesus Christ, in every aspect of my life, in every facet of my life. Lord, I want to be addicted. I want to be addicted. I want to be addicted to you. Lord, give me the grace. Give me the grace. In 2015, we are two minutes away. We are two minutes away, beloved. The Lord has been good. The Lord is being good. The Lord is carrying us. Yeah, that plane of 2014. That plane of 2014 is about to offload us yeah, at the precipice and we shall soon be whisked into 2015. But that plane, that phantom jet that the Lord has provided called year 2015 to carry us into, to carry us into, the Lord is one mile away. Yeah, that plane, that plane, that plane, we have been offloaded. Yea, we have been offloaded at the precipice. Uh, and we are, yea, we are boarding into, we are boarding, boarding, boarding. We are making a boarding. We are making our body an entry, an entry into the plane called 2015. Uh, beloved, we are making that entry. We are making, uh, we are waiting for the last person to board. Uh, we are waiting, we are waiting for the last person to board. Uh, we are waiting for the last person to board. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, hey, beloved, beloved, we are waiting for the last person. Uh, we are here, yeah, we are down to the last counter. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey, we have landed. We have entered. We have entered the door of this shop. 2015 has arrived. 2015 has arrived. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we have made it. Blessed be the name of the living God. 